multiplying decimals, the algorithm. In the last video, we used models in order to mu multiply decimals, and we used base 10 blocks and uh, hundreds grids in order to figure it out. In this video, I'm going to teach you the algorithm that helps you know um, specifically where to put the decimal when you multiply decimals. Let's look at the problems that you found in the last video, in the models video. I hope that as you did these problems that you noticed a pattern. If you take the two factors that you multiply together, the product still has the same numbers that you would expect here as if these were whole numbers. Notice if you took away the decimal and thought about 5 times 3, you would get 15. We'll skip this one for a second. If you looked here, 5 times 5 would make 25. 5 times 7 makes 35. 2 times 4 makes 8, and 6 times 9 equals 54. Up here, if you try, no, we can't do this mentally, but if we had done 75 times 5, we would have gotten 375. So many of you, as you went through these problems, you noticed that pattern, and you wanted to just say, oh, it's 15. The problem is that we need to know in each one of these exactly where to place the decimal. How would we know, for example, if this was 8, or if the decimal would go here and it would be 8 tenths or 8 hundredths or even 8 thousandths. The big question that we are going to use the algorithm to figure out is where do I put the decimal? Before though we do that, let's think first for a second though what makes sense. The first method that you can use is to estimate. Um, notice here I have 3 and 9 tenths times 4. I went ahead and ignored the decimal for a minute and multiplied 39 times 4 like I normally would. 9 times 4 makes 36. 4 times 3 plus 12 would make 15. Now I'm going to just think for a minute what makes sense. And I can do that by estimating or rounding. 3 and 9 tenths rounded to the ones place would become 4. The, this 4 can stay as it is because it's already in the ones place. If I multiply 4 times 4 and get 16, that tells me that my answer should be around 16. Well, then I'm going to look at this product that I get and think about where it makes sense to put the decimal. Would it make sense to put it here? That would make 156. If I put it here, that would be 15 and 6 tenths, which is really close to 16. Or if I put it here, that would be 1 and 56 hundredths, which is like a dollar and 56 cents. So the only one that makes sense is to put it here because 15 and 6 tenths would round up to 16. Let's do one more problem like that using our estimation skills. I did 5 and 2 tenths times 6 and 1 tenths like normal. I multiplied the 1 times 2 gave me 2, 5 times 1 gave me 5, put my placeholder zero. Remember, this whole time I'm pretending like these decimal points aren't here, just multiplying like normal. Then I'm going to do 6 times 2 makes 12. I put the 2 down here and carried the 1. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 made 32. Then I add it up like normal. So now I need to figure out where to put my decimal in this problem. I can round. 5 and 2 tenths would round to 5. 6 and 1 tenths is about 6. When I multiply those, I should get an answer that's close to 30. If I put my decimal point here, that would be 3,172. This would be 317 and 2 tenths. Putting it here would be 31 and 72 hundredths. Ah, that sounds close to 30. If I put it down here, that would be 3 and 172 thousandths. Or way down here, that would be even smaller than 1. So the place that makes sense is right here. Now, sometimes we're not going to have problems that we can round and figure out that way. For example, if you had two decimals that were both less than one, it's very hard to think about exactly what that means in real life or round it to figure it out. So now I'm going to teach you the second method, the algorithm really, that's called count and move over. So the first step is to always solve the problem without the decimal just like normal. So let's do that first. 5 times 7 is 35. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 would be 10. So now I need to figure out where to put my decimal. What I'm going to do is ask myself how many digits are after the decimal in the problem. So if I look here at 1 and 5 tenths, I have one number after the decimal. I'm going to even underline it. And I have no numbers after the decimal in 7. There's no there's, decimal point is really here, and there's no digits after it. So I have one number after the decimal in this problem. 
So then I'm going to move my decimal to the left this many times. We imagine that our decimal is here at the end of our product and we move it to the left that many times. One time because I had one digit after the decimal. So it would go here. And then we would check to make sure that that makes sense in this particular problem. This round would round to 2, this would round to 7, 2 times 7 would make 14. If this is my estimate, well this answer makes a lot more sense than if my decimal went here, that would be 105, way too much. 10, which sort of rounds to 11, which is kind of close to 14. My other choice would be here, and that would be 1 and 5 hundredths, way too small. So this is the place that makes the most sense. Let's do four more practice problems practicing these steps of the algorithm. Here's my first one. 8 tenths times 6 tenths. 8 times, so for again, forget about your decimal and your extra zeros for now. 6 times 8 is 48. Then notice that I have one, two numbers after the decimals in the problem. One here and one here. I pretend that I have a decimal point here and I'm going to move it over two times because I have two numbers after the decimal. One, two. So my answer, and then I put that decimal there, I want to go ahead and have that zero in front of the decimal point, so my answer would be 48 hundredths. Problem number two, this one looks much the same, but we're going to see one thing that's different. In this problem, um, 5 times 4 is 20. I have one, two numbers after the decimal. I'm going to move over one, two times, place my decimal. That makes me want to have the zero in the ones place also. And then we know that decimal dog can eat the zero. So you could write this as an answer, but this would also be correct. These are, the, these are equivalent decimals. So sometimes um, you might be checking your work, and this might, idea might trip you. Remember that if, and we saw this same kind of issue when we used the zeros trick. Remember that if your um, product of your two factors ends in a zero, you have to think about moving it over two places, but then you can still um, take one out. So think about that sometimes when you're checking your work. Did I have a zero that I went ahead and, and ate there thanks to decimal dog? Um, on this one, I'm going to solve it like normal, pretending that there's no decimal in there at first. By the way, if you like lattice, you can still do the, the use the lattice method and then just go back and look at your answer and figure out where to put your decimal. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 2 is 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Put my placeholder 0. And then 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. And I'm going to add 8. 14, 4. So I got 4, 48. Now I need to see that there is one number in the problem behind the decimal, so I'm going to move my decimal over one time. This is another one that I can estimate. This is about 30. This is about 2. When I multiply 30 times 2, I get 60. And I see that 44 and 8 tenths makes more sense than if I put the decimal here, that would be 448. If I put it here, that would only be 4 and 48 hundredths. If I put it here, that would be only 448 thousandths, which is really small. So it makes the most sense in order to make the number closest to this, put the decimal here and get 44 and 8 tenths. Last one, 19 hundredths times 45 hundredths. Forget your decimals for a minute, multiply like normal. 9 times 5 is 45. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 4 is 9. Put my 0 down. I'm going to forget that guy for a minute. 9 times 4 is 36. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. Now I'm going to add them up. 5. There we go. I got 855. Now I look in my problem and see 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers behind the decimal. So I'm going to start moving them over. You might even draw it. 1, 2, Three. Hmm, the problem is that I don't have another digit to go over beside. But we know that we can think about there being a zero there. So you might have to add some extra zero sometimes. So I put my zero there and I'm going to move over one more time. And that's where my decimal is going to go. And add that extra zero there um, before my decimal to represent the ones place. So this answer is 855 ten thousandths. Remember, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. Thanks to there being one, two, three, four digits in the problem, I need to move over my decimal one, two, three, 
four times in the answer.